we elected to receive. But you know, it's important to set the tone. You gotta make them fear that three or that early. The Steelers should never take the ball first. That's like the other day, Dad, when we was down at Texas Roadhouse, and you could have started us off with one of them onion blossoms. Instead, I get back from the bathroom to find Haas salads. It was just a plate of weeds. Whose Haas did them salads come from any Haas? Tom's Haas. This week's episode of Pittsburgh Dad is brought to you by the law firm of Bordis and Bordis. I get excited about the TD call, then immediately angered by the missed extra point. The Steelers are practicing checks and balances. There's a block punt. Touchdown? Touchdown? Oh no, he's down at the one. Don't be down at the one. Be, be at the three, the eight, the 20, anywhere but the one. We can't get in on one. Enough of these checks and balances. I tell you, Mitch and Kenny are just like my money at Christmas time. Instantly leave the pocket. The Steelers are gonna have to pretend like good company is coming over and clean Haas. Behind a catch, pull the fridge at. Steelers got a red up. Gardner miss you, Gardner. That ain't a quarterback, that's a section down Lowe's. The hell's the dad's name? Flooring. Rick, what do you mean Gardner miss you got that dog in him? What, cause he's hairy, he stinks, and the Colts owner would much rather be playing with the younger pup. And yeah, he got a dog in him. This Rich Eisen's actually been kind of nice towards the Steelers. Give him time, he'll soon be seduced by the Jag side, just like Hollingsworth. You'll see his teeth getting longer and his face more skeletal as the game progresses. Look at that great punt by the Colts. Why can't we do that? I tell you, Sanchez must be Spanish for McAfee. Down 11, second and 21, pop quiz. Should you go draw play or just lay out and take a nap? Trick question, because they're the exact same thing. This Colts run game is Taylor Swift. Constantly shoved down our throats all day against our will. 24 unanswered points. 24. The only person who can answer this now is Jack Byer. Oh, now it's 27. That joke had the same shelf life as our interim offensive coordinators. You can't start a fire. You can't start a fire without a spark. Mason's for hire. Even though he's just been sitting on the sideline the last two games, while we look at Mitch, look completely inept in this offense in every way, shape, and form. You should have put him in after the first INT. But no, you think in your head the right time to do it is when the floodwaters are up to your damn neck. Heck, that should have been the lyrics to the song. Three, two, one, season. Huh? Somebody said the Steeler fans are spoiled from past successes. Bull. When both my paps went to fight in WW2, it's because they seen a great way of life in their country that was worth preserving and fighting for. That's the same mentality why Steeler fans are so proud and vocal. In Pittsburgh, we've had a winning tradition that we'd like to see passed down to future generations. And since we can't physically fight like the paps, we'll achieve our goals for this team by constantly complaining, hollering at the TV, and insufferable whining. And if we stop complaining, we'll see armies just come in here, lay claim to our inherited territory, just like what happened with France in 1940. And the Browns, like, in every year of their existence. Clean house, go Steelers. Hey, make sure you subscribe. If you don't subscribe, you're living in your fears. Just like punting the ball when you should have kicked the field goal.